people are already starting about uh, talk about the next coach. You know, what does that look like? Do would you bring a Roberto Martinez to to the national team? Would would he take that job? Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see what happens with with the national team and and you know if if they if if Greg sticks with this, does Greg go into to coaching? I know he misses the the everyday club football um, experience. So all I can say is that this group took a huge step forward. Uh, I hope they get to play in a Copa America. I, I think you, you play in a, a, as many tournaments as you can against the, the top class. You're scheduling friendlies back. Like when we were playing, it felt like we were always playing Brazil's and, and England's and, and Portugal, you know, you're playing big countries. You're playing quality all the time because you don't have world cup qualifying. So uh, and the I pandemic I, was tough. The pandemic yes. made it really tough in that period between that and, and the World Cup qualifying cycles as a result of that and all those types of things made it really hard. You, Greg Berhold doesn't have a great record against World Cup uh, qualified World Cup teams in mm -hmm. friendlies um, uh, over that period. But having said that, like you said, I was reading an article uh, the other – somebody had sent me something a couple days ago about what the thing I've talked about a number of times on the show, which is we played one summer before qualifying – we played England at Wembley. We played Spain in Santander. We played Argentina and Giant Stadium. All sellout crowds against their number one first teams. And yes, they were friendlies. But for us, those were World Cup games. Mm -hmm. Those aren't when you are playing against teams of that level. There is no friendly in that. Maybe for them, but for us, this is a chance of a lifetime, right? And I think getting a chance to do that and test ourselves constantly, and hopefully we we made it make a strength of schedule that really really tests um, our style of play, our systems of play. Our, our, our tactics within game, our in-game management, all those things to kind of see where we stack up over the next few years and keep building on this team type chemistry. Because again, look at Belgium, look at uh, Germany. So th th those are like the end of, 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 of eras. You know, they're at the end of these eras of players that have played together for 12 years in the national team, eight, 10, 12 years. We've got these guys together for two years now. We got something to build on, which is pretty amazing. I, I, I would say this, the expectation though in 2026 is to win. Mm -hmm. So if that's the bar to win, we, we got to knock out round with this group and let's be real. No one gave them a, a chance, right? They should set the bar at winning and you're doing whatever it takes to win because that's, that should be the goal. And so nothing uh, about this group should, should be thinking about taking step, steps backwards. It's, it's yeah. forward, push, push. Uh, and and bringing that winning mentality, creativity, uh, building off of, of what they've, they've been able to accomplish in this World Cup. Well, let me ask you this, Charlie. Obviously, we brought up Jimmy's tweet uh, on the screen earlier about a coach should only be around for one si uh, cycle. Now, I'm not as married to that as Jimmy is, but I understand the sentiment. The problem with the national team and the problem with U.S. soccer has always been, if you look at the 100-year histories of most footballing powerhouses, they, the, 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 the style of play is woven deep into the culture of the team. We are a melting pot of cultures in the U.S. Transition isn't always good in terms of going from one coach to, to another unless you're handing uh, the project blueprint off to, to take it to the next level and then add your pieces to it. Are you uh, uh, of the thought that the U.S. should get another, another head coach? And if so, say even in the case that, 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 that you are, is it somebody that should be U.S. based? Is it a big name Champions League coach? Is it is it a Roberto Martinez? That's that's good. Is it a you know your 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 um, what's his name? The French guy that's that's a World Cup specialist uh, in terms of qualifying teams and doing well. I mean, who are you thinking about in the context of this uh, taking this to the next taking us to the next level? Because it's not just about like you said, this is about the U.S. winning in twenty six. So whoever this is has to create some pretty big. Uh, cover a lot of ground between where we are now, round of 16, uh, clearly beaten, and probably the Netherlands being one of, I don't know, not in the top, I would say, eight teams in the World Cup this year, but clearly beaten by them, to being a favorite, or at least in our minds, a favorite to win the World Cup in 26. Well, I can tell you, I, I am also not glued to the idea of, of keeping the same manager, and I don't think it needs to be an American. Uh, I think it's, you bring in someone, who has a, a clear vision of what this national team looks like in 2026 and, and one that's going to be competing for World Cup. I see a lot of people in here. I said, the mentality has got to be you're going to win that World Cup. 
you you're trying to win. You're doing everything. Mm-hmm. That doesn't mean we're gonna win, but it, it better you. What are we playing this game for if you're not trying to win that World Cup? The whole idea. Belgium is were pre- a favorite to win. <laughs> Belgium had a golden generation. They didn't win a World Cup. England have been knocking on the door. They haven't won the World Cup. You know, like uh, Germany was able to pull it off. Some other nations able to pull it off. Uh, Italy go from where they are to not qualifying for a World Cup. And so anybody who thinks that our pathway is any different than even the biggest countries outside of maybe a Brazil, uh, you know, mm-hmm. doing it and being able to do it are two very different things, right? Mm-hmm. So you, you go out and you get the best coach that you, that you can. You go out and get the best coach that you can. And you give them time to uh, understand the the the. The players understand uh, how to how to get this team to play, but everyone in the world saw the U.S. play and thought they they have a talented group. Yeah, it it, it was clear to see Louis Van Hall, uh, the the coaches uh, Carlos Quiros, they saw the U.S. and said this group can play. This is a quality team. They have absolute quality. So. I think it's not going to be hard to persuade a coach to come uh, and and work with this this team for a World Cup that's going to be played in the U.S. Like, and by the way, Charlie, here's a here's a fun fact on that: no manager that managed a foreign team has ever won a World Cup with that team. I believe that's a fact. Our producer Alex is throwing that into the chat right now. If I'm wrong, you're gonna to have to tack him. But that sounds right to me, so I'm gonna go with it for now until until I can fact check. <laughs> I'll say anything in real time, Charlie, but it sounds like that's accurate. I mean, but 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 for you, I mean, it's it's really easy to think about. We've got some people in there saying Jurgen Klopp, Thomas Tuchel, uh, Jesse Marsh, who was clearly like, I don't really do this whole like national team thing. I like the club stuff. Um, uh, but but it does have to be the right person, right? And if you look at the U.S. last time around, we went a couple of years before hiring Greg Berhalter, and yes, there was all the chatter about the nepotism with Jay and Greg and all these types of things. Hey. But Greg Berhalter took us pretty far. Kai, Kai, uh, 7, Kai 718 came, came, at, came at you with some heat. And another fun fact, no American coach has ever won the World Cup either. So <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. But that's a smaller uh, statistic than uh, no foreign manager has ever won a World Cup uh, uh, with, with their team. So that's a pretty big deal. Uh, and I actually didn't even know that. So I hope it's right. 